Okay, we're going to create a trace over 2D grease pencil object. So the first thing we'll do is go to 2D animation, of course. And I can just start drawing right now, which is nice. But you notice a couple of things. First of all, the strength is a little bit low. For what I'm going to be doing here, I want full strength. So I'll just drag that all the way up to one. And there we go. If you're using a drawing tablet, I actually have the XP Pen uh, G640 in front of me. Then you can choose to use or not use pressure strength. Now, if you don't have the driver installed, uh, it won't matter anyway. But you can just turn those off. Uh, if you just want full strength lines like this. Uh, okay, I'm just using the mouse right now, so it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is load an image in the background, and I'm using the scroll wheel right now to, to zoom in and out. But what I'll do is I'm going to go to uh, object mode. I'm going to go add image background. Then I'll go to my downloads folder, get Donald Duck, and I'm just going to zoom in just a little tiny bit i can click in the middle move that around if i want to if i wanted to move it over here for example but i'll just leave them in the middle for now other thing i want to do is lighten that up a little bit so i'll add some opacity not too hard to do go to image here and then we'll select opacity and then just drag this down to where we think we want to have it that looks fine to me okay we're almost ready to draw but now when i go back up here we don't have draw mode and that's because we need to go back and reselect the stroke layer. And then you see everything shows up down here as we would want it to be. And uh, we're, we should be good to go with draw mode. And there we go. Uh, the other thing too is if I just start drawing, I might want to change the radius. And you notice as you zoom in, shift middle mouse lets you slide over. As you zoom in and draw, that line thickness maintains whatever you set it to up here, which is obviously very important. And I think I want it just a little bit thinner, maybe 17 or so is going to be fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is move over here and just work on the hand to begin with. Uh, a couple other things, actually. Uh, I've got my pen now in my hand, I'm not using the mouse anymore. And as I trace over this, you might notice that it's kind of wobbly. Now, of course, part of that might just be me, but we can do better than this. And so what I'm going to do is undo those. And I'm going to go into Stroke. Post-processing, bring that up to one, and I'll set this to about 15. You can just, you can drag, you can select one at a time, or you can just click in the middle and type the number in. Okay, that should do it. And now if I draw, the post-processing means that after I draw, it's going to go in there and do some cleanup. So it will still might look a little bit rough when I draw it, but look at that, how it rounds everything off nicely. Okay, I'm not going to do a perfect job on this. You notice these lines where they're tapered. That's where it really could make a difference if you set um, uh, pressure strength. And again, that's only going to work if you have the driver. And actually, radius is the one. That it'll change the radius if you set that right. Got a tiny little gap there. And that may or may, or may not matter, depending on your settings. We're going to go in and have a look at that when we start doing fills in just a couple of minutes. I'm off there, but that's okay. We're not going to worry too much about this for now. We can always clean those lines up after. So I'm trying. Oh, this is definitely one where we'd like to have pressure, pressure sensitivity in terms of line radius. Oh, and look how it's cleaning those lines up afterwards. It's just terrific. Okay, that one's really messy. I'm just going to leave it. I would normally redo that, that line because that looks terrible. But we're going to use some cleanup tools in just a second here to fix that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, because this is pretty messy, is I'm going to save it. Final file save. And we'll just go uh, Don. Hit enter twice and it's saved. Now let's clean some of those lines up. I'm going to use the mouse for this. We're going to go up to draw mode and we're going to set that to sculpt mode. And now I can start pushing these lines. The only problem is I need to create a circle with uh, uh, that's larger so I can have a, a larger area of influence. All I do is hit the F key and then drag without doing anything else. I'm just dragging the mouse and then click when I think I've got the radius right. And now I click on the area I want to move and look at that. I can actually move that very nicely. Okay, that the radius might be a little bit large, but we're not looking for perfection here really. Okay, I've got a... F again, I'm going to zoom in. And you get so that you're pretty quick at, at doing this. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, and I could just go through and, and clean all of these up if I want to. If a line is really bad, okay, i got to undo that one. 
F again. And let's just see if we can clean that up. Yeah, I got to move this over. There we go. I think you get the idea and you can work on yours as well too. That line's actually quite bent. All we do is click on smooth, drag over top and it smooths the line out. And I'll go back to where we were before, hit F once again and just pull this to make the adjustments. I want to try and get this. I want to try and get this fairly close since I'm doing a, a demo here. And I'm going to need to smooth that out a little bit here again. I might just increase the, there we go. I just run it down there and look at that. It's just almost instant. Okay, that's good enough for now. Uh, this actually looks pretty good. So let's say we want to do fills now. We got a couple of problems because I've got a gap there, first of all. And I guess what we should do first is go back to draw mode. And we need to change some settings. First thing we do is go down to the fills layer. That's important. Okay, make sure you select the fills layer. Second of all, we go to bucket fill. Third of all, we go up here to solid fill here. Now, if we click inside of here, oh, it did actually do a pretty good job. But why is it gray when we've got green up here? Well, that actually has to do with what we've got selected down here as our base color and what we have selected for solid fill. I'm going to undo that because there's actually an easier way for us to work fairly quickly here. And what I'm going to do is rather than use material mode, I'm going to switch over to color attribute mode. And if we do that, then we can actually select, there's our base color, I don't want green, but we could select the, the whatever color's in here. Now, actually, what we want to do is fill the hat in. So I'm going to select a blue that kind of matches Donald Duck's hat. I think that's pretty close. Okay, and then we click here, and it doesn't work. And that may have to do with this gap here. So what we can do to fix this is go into Advanced, and then we're going to go to Stroke Extension, and I'm going to set this to about... 0.25. I've noticed that usually works pretty good. And then we click in here and look what happens. It draws those little green lines um, to show the gaps and how they're going to be filled. When we click the second time, it fills it in. You can notice it's not perfect. There's a little bit of an area missing here. We could clean that up, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to set this to black. And by the way, this color, if we want to keep this color, we can add that into our palette. And there it is, that's our custom palette down here. I know I want black. Uh, we're gonna click twice. I can turn those off if I, don't, if I don't think there's any issues. Oh, but we do have a problem here. I wanna fix that, so I'm gonna go back here. I'm just gonna save it first, Control S. And three things we need to do. Remember, we always go lines, we go pencil, and we go solid stroke. We have to do it in that order, that's important. Oh, <laughs> and we got another problem here. We need to select our color, and we'll go to black. There we go. I'm just using a mouse, so this might be less than perfect. But it should, there we go, it cleaned it up a little bit. If I wanted to get picky, I could really clean that up some more, but I'm not going to. So again, we're gonna go fills, bucket, and we're gonna go solid fill. Normally what I do is I'll, I'll draw in uh, everything first, and then I'll come back and do the fills afterwards just to speed things up. I'm gonna save this, Control S, and just remember I'm scrolling with the, uh, with the scroll wheel, Shift and scroll wheel just pressing it or middle mouse button and I can actually move it around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just draw it and if anything else comes up I'm going to draw and then speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. If anything else comes up I'll, uh, I'll stop and mention it. Okay, so I'm not sure what I, what I hit there, but um, it's easy. If you get if you get disoriented like this, just hit zero on the number pad, and it'll take you back to camera view. Alternately, if something happens, if I just uh, scroll with the middle mouse button and I end up somewhere I can't figure out where I am, you can always click right here, and that'll toggle the camera view. So 
Again, shift middle mouse should move me. There we go, without causing too much damage. Okay, I'm back in draw mode here. Okay, I'm gonna save that, go back to draw mode. We're, we're pretty much done here. We just gotta do some fills. So that shouldn't take too long. I've got the blues already figured out. So let's see if that's gonna just work. Let's hope it does. So we'll go to the fills layer down here. We go to the bucket fill. Uh, we go up here to solid fill. And we can select that blue color that we saved. Click inside here, click again. And that was easy. And you notice we didn't have to be too specific about the colors. We need a yellow and a red, so that's, we'll just select those. And I'll add that to the palette as well down here. Now the beak color, I think for that what I might actually do is go back to the image. I'm going to go to object mode, zoom back. I'm going to select that image. And let's actually bring the opacity right back up again. Seems a bit counterintuitive, but what I want to do is try and match the colors on top. There are better ways to do that, by the way. But, um, oh, don't forget you have to click on stroke up here. And we've got to go back to draw mode and we've got our fill selected fills bucket and solid fill which is good i want to get that orange for the beak i'm not great with color matching here but let's see if we can uh, let's not that looks pretty good okay let's add that while we've got it click and fill click and fill and our legs the same color legs now kind of Okay, uh, we have to do a slightly darker color for inside the mouth. So we'll just move, go, <laughs> that's not it. Okay, let's try that one. Don't forget to add it. Uh, it's almost the same color, that's okay. And then it's like a pink color for the tongue. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, now, if we go back to the image, I'm going to save this. I don't want to lose it. Uh, I haven't done the eyes yet. There's a blue for the eyes that we need. Oh, that looks okay. Fill the eyes in. It's a little bit darker. That's okay. We need black once again. For the whites or for the black part of the eyes, pupils. And I'm not, I think we might be finished. Uh, so what we'll do is go back to the image. We're going to save first. We're going to go into edit mode or object mode, I should say. Try and select the image. And then I'm going to drag down the opacity. Ah, so the only thing left is the tie. Wow, that's not bad, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we'll go back to, oops, we'll select stroke first, which brings our layers back. Go back to draw mode. Uh, I'm going to select a red color. This should be easy. That looks pretty red. Uh, maybe too red. It's kind of a brighter red, isn't it? But I'm not really... Let's try and brighten that up. It's like a happy red. Three clicks and we should be finished. Quite clear. By the way, if your colors aren't working, uh, it could be that you've selected, you haven't selected the right uh, viewport shading. Um, and so that just gives you your wireframe. This is your basic colors. And this actually gives you the colors inside of here, which is what you're going to want for this exercise. Oh, if you want to render it, F12. And that gives you a render. And there it is. Okay. Uh, and you can save this by going image, save. And then we call it uh, Donald. We've got a type set up here, PNG, you do PNG or JPEG, whatever you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Either is fine. And then save as image. But make sure that you do set the extension. Make sure that you also know where you're saving that. So once again, image, uh, save as. And make sure that you know where this folder is so you're able to find that to upload your image. Okay, I 
think that's everything. I can just click the X here. That'll get me out of this window. Now, uh, by the way, when you're drawing, if you prefer, you can click on 2D full canvas. That might actually be easier. Um, I, I, I'm so used to working in the 2D animation window. I like to see the layers down here. Uh, and you can always zoom in. So that's usually how I work. A couple of things I'd still like to fix on this. And the first is the color. The blue color here is a little bit too dark. And if we just undo the stroke or if we if we make it invisible. And let's go back to that. Actually, we'll go back to the drawing. So we'll go into object mode. We're in object mode. I'll select a drawing. I'll make my drawing invisible. And then I'll bring up the opacity to 100 percent. And now if I turn on the layer that I drew on, you can see that the blue color is quite a bit darker. I want to try and match that color a bit better. We could use the eyedropper and create a new color. That's not too hard to do. But let's just see if we can match it by actually going into the drawing mode. So what I'll do is go back, turn that layer on. We'll go into draw mode. Oh, select the stroke first, of course. And if I click here on color, and I try to match that original color. I, uh, it's somewhere around there looks pretty close. Okay. And then let's uh, make sure that we're on the fills layer. Select a bucket and go up here to, uh, whoops, and then go up here and make sure that we're on color attribute mode, which we are. And then I can select and fill. And what I'm going to do is just, oh, I think I got that pretty close. That's almost perfect. Okay. Probably should have been a little more careful the first time around. But the good news is it does not take very long to go back and refill that color in and see if we can match it a little more carefully. That's pretty good. The yellow looks fine. Uh, the orange is, is could be a little bit lighter. So again, you could go back and fix that if you wanted to. Uh, that's a pretty minor thing. Everything else looks pretty good. And if we make, the, if we make that um, image invisible, all we have to do is click right here. We can hide that in the viewport. And there is our finished image. We don't need to go back and select it and uh, set the transparency. That's actually not the best way to do it. Better yet is to simply hide it by clicking little I right here. Okay, last thing that I would like to show you is how can we erase lines that we don't want? And some of these lines are a little bit messy. So what we can do um, is first of all, go to eraser, which is right here. And there's different modes. And you can notice the size. Um, and the size we can change by using the F button again. Going to make it fairly small but if i start to erase it just gradually erases it it's not what we want for this style of line art and hit Control z and all we do is go up and select point and now wherever we click it's going to disappear it's it's that simple and that is how i would suggest um, uh, using the eraser we can click here and clean this up a fair bit too oh it's that interesting i got rid of that color uh, anyway, if you uh, if you have some lines that are poorly drawn, this is going to be your your best bet. This one here needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, and I got to go back and redo that color. Not hard to do. Back to draw mode or back, bucket fill, I should say. Make sure that we're on our stroke layer. Make sure we're in fills, and we simply click here twice, and I think we are finished, Donald Duck. That's it. Over and out, and don't forget to save.